In this lesson, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to use reference photos in Procreate. So I'm on unsplash.com. I always get free use photos. So I just saved this one to my camera roll. Um, make sure you don't get the ones with a plus sign unless you have the subscription. Uh, those aren't free. And I can see this is in a, you know portrait mode here. So that's something to take note of. And now I just need to decide what size I want my canvas to be. So let's go over to Procreate and tap the plus sign and the plus sign again. And I just do inches. So I'm going to inches and I'm thinking about 11 by 14 is what my uh, final result is gonna be. So um, if I do 14 tall and 11 wide and try to bring that photo in, that should work really well. So I'm going to do, for the width, I'm going to do 11 inches, and for the height, I'll do 14 inches, and I always use 300 DPI, and I always use this profile because Display P3 is mostly just for Apple products, and tap Create. So that might not fit the reference image perfectly, but that's okay. I still want that size for, if, in case I want to print this, that's a common print size. So I'm just adding, I went to the actions, add and insert photo, and I can just bring that photo right in and move it around to where I want it. So if I want, I can increase, cause I'm not using this, you know, in, in Procreate, it does pixelate if you upscale like this, but we're not using this photo. So we're just getting it to where we want it on the canvas. And now I have the photo kind of exactly where I might want to draw. And I want to get a grid on this photo. So I'm going to go to the actions menu again and go to canvas and turn on the drawing guide, edit drawing guide. And I want to play around with the grid size. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna turn my thickness and opacity up so it's really obvious. You can make it whatever color up here and whatever thickness and opacity you want. And you can also grab this node and move it around. So I can also go to this little number here and tap on it and go to inches. And maybe I want my grid size to be one inch. So I'm just gonna tap done or one and done. And now I have a one inch grid. So it's split a half inch over here and a half inch over here. And that doesn't really matter. You can move it around if you wanna to try to really line it up. But the perfection of where the grid is doesn't matter. I'm gonna tap the node and tap reset. Um, I just need a grid on there. And then I can tap done. Now, if you try to send this off and as a JPEG to your camera roll, it will not show that grid. So if I want a reference photo that has the grid on it, I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot. And then with that screenshot, I'll just edit the, I'll crop it down. You're about to hear my dogs tapping toes again. <laughs> and save it to my camera roll. And now I have that photo with the grid on it. So now I can I don't need that reference photo anymore. I have the grid. I can split screen and pull up that photo right there. I can make it smaller, make this smaller. If I need it to be kind of exactly that same size or approximately, I can keep it split like that and have it somewhere like this. Um, and then I can start sketching over here using the grid for reference and the same grid over here uh, to get my sketch done. So that's one way. And I like this way a lot, but not everybody likes to use the split screen. So there's another thing you can do, and that is to go back into the actions and canvas and then tap reference and then image and you're going to import that image here. You can do, if you don't like the grid, you can do the one without the grid. And then you have this on your screen and you can change the size of it. You can do a little quick pinch and it goes to the exact size of the um, photo there. And then you have this right next to it. Ooh, that's lovely. I like that a lot. I've made it, I think, pretty much the same size. The nice thing about 
this having it in the reference um, image like this is you can actually sample colors from this so you can't sample colors when you have the split screen yeah so that is one way of capturing the grid on your reference photo and then using it in two different ways either with split screen or this reference image and if you want to make this smaller you can make it smaller if you want to get rid of it you can turn it off by tapping that or go back in and toggling it off right here and every once in a while it gets a little buggy when i have reference image up here so sometimes i don't like using it that way um i also want to point out that because you use a free use photo you can trace so keep that in mind. There's another way that you can do this and with Procreate there's layer limits right now although I'm recording this in the beginning of February 2025 and they're about to come out with a new update that's gonna I think wipe out layer limits so um, right now this might not work for very many people depending on how much RAM your iPad has. So here's what it is. So this canvas is 11 by 14 and I want to make it double wide and put my photo on the same canvas. So that means I need 22 by 14 and that canvas size might be too big for me. So let's see, tap the plus sign, tap the plus sign, inches, width 22, height 14. That gives me 63 layers and I have the maximum amount of RAM that iPads have right now, which is 16 gigs. If you only have two or four or six, two or four or eight, I should say, you might not be able to make that size of canvas. So that isn't a great option for a lot of people, but I'll show you it anyways, just in case you can down the road. So I'm gonna tap create and now I have this double wide canvas and I can import that photo, just my initial photo here and I can get it over here and get it into place. If I wanna know exactly where the half mark is, I can go to the actions canvas, turn on the drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and max out my grid. So at least I know where that center line is. I just turned up the opac opacity and thickness. So now I can really make sure I am getting this exactly where I want it on this half of the screen here. Um, I can also draw a line on here if I turn on drawing assist since it's on the 2D grid. Um, let's see, I don't use these brushes very often, but I can just draw a straight line. Hopefully you can see that. I'll make it red. Because the drawing assist is on it, it hel helps you draw a perfectly straight line. All right, so now I can go back in to the edit drawing guide and I can change my grid to inches and one inch or how about two inches and done and I can move it around if I want just like before all right so now I can see where the half is that I need to be drawing on compared to the other half if I didn't have that line there, it would be hard to know kind of exactly um, where my half is. And I would definitely do this on a new layer and switch to your sketching brush and you know have your grid however you want it and get your sketch over here. So I'm gonna put a couple of marks on here since this is not a drawing lesson. Um, let's say that's my finished bird sketch. <laughs> So now what do I do? I don't need this double wide canvas anymore. So I can go down here and because I'm on a new layer with my sketch, I can just delete that. And then I can go in, crop and resize. So I'm on canvas, crop and resize. And I can manually slide this in or I can go to settings. And for this 22 inches wide, I can go 11 and tap done and then tap snapping so I can make sure that I'm getting this perfectly where I need it to be. And snap that right over here. It's gonna crop this gray part right off and tap done. So now I'm back to just, I can turn my grid off and I can start painting my sketch. So I have one more way to use reference photos. I almost forgot to show you. And this is a great way if you like to use the time lapse when you're done and you don't want your reference photo showing. So if you go to the wrench icon, 
add, and then when you're inserting a photo, so a lot of times people will just pick their photo, insert it right on the screen here, whether you want to trace it or just have it because it's a free use photo, you can trace or just have it up here in the corner and then draw on a different layer. Um, that's going to show in your time lapse. So the other thing you can do is when you're adding, you swipe left on insert photo and it inserts the photo on a private layer and you can put this wherever you want and then go to a new layer to do your sketch. Um, that will no longer show up in a time-lapse video, which is really nice. And you can see it says private right here. I also like to use private when I'm doing little samples. Um, so sometimes I'm testing out, if I'm really paying attention to having a cool time-lapse at the end, um, I insert a private photo and then I tap clear and I still have a private layer. So as I'm illustrating and I go through and I'm going, okay, is this brush something that has the texture that I want? Um, I'm gonna go to the private layer and I'm gonna play around and I'm gonna see, oh, maybe I wanna smudge that, right? If I do some testing on the private layer, that also will not show up in your time lapse. So that's pretty cool. Or sometimes you can put a little palette, like little um, examples of color up here so you don't have to keep opening the palette over here if you like to have your palette on your screen with you. So the private layer is handy and I hope you use it. All right, I hope that helps. I know that was kind of quick, but that's the whole point of this little series of bite-sized lessons. <laughs> See you later.